from San Francisco, it's The Cube, covering PagerDuty Summit 2019. Brought to you by PagerDuty. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with The Cube. We're at PagerDuty Summit. It's the fourth year of PagerDuty Summit, third year of The Cube being here at the Western St. Francis in downtown San Francisco. And let me tell you, PagerDuty Summit's outgrown the Western St. Francis. We're excited to be joined by our next two guests coming all the way across the Pacific Ocean. On my immediate left is Daniel Sultana, the group director for SAS for Technology One. Daniel, great to see you. Good to see you, too. Thank you. And on his left, Cameron Edwards. He's the production engineer lead, also for Technology One. Welcome. Thank you. So first question, first time to the States? Not the first time to the States. I've been to the States many times, but it's always great to come back to California, in particular San Francisco. Great. It is the first time for me, but it's been absolutely great. I got the whole weekend to explore San Francisco. It's just been wonderful. Good, 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 good. It's a great, it's a great place to uh, to explore around. But let's talk about PagerDuty Summit. So first time at PagerDuty Summit, a lot of action going on. A thousand people, company IPO this year. It's a lot of buzz around there. Truly really exciting. Great for PagerDuty IPO this year. Um, very similar company to Technology One in terms of size, um, in terms of genetic heritage. So there's a lot of affiliation between our two companies. All right, let's jump into. So what is Technology One? So Technology One is Australia's largest enterprise software company. Uh, we produce software in uh, a few vertical markets, focusing on uh, higher education, local and federal government, asset intensive, and health and community services. All right. So. You guys are presenting later today on a really interesting topic. It was it was referenced in the keynote. Your your conversation is how to increase customer experiences without burning out your people. I think the official report was unplanned work, the human impact on an always on world. This is a real deal. People don't often talk about the human impact. Um, you know, we're at pager duty. The pager the pager's got a ring somewhere. Are you seeing a big impact in the terms of the pressure on the teams to deliver? with this kind of consumerization of IT expectations? And that's exactly it. If you, if you look at the enterprise world, the enterprise is expecting consumer response. You know, if your Netflix goes down, your home internet goes down, you want that fixed immediately. It's the same pressures now that we're seeing transfer into the enterprise space. It's much more complicated. And for me, I'm, I'm on call myself. So implementing these kind of systems, it just helps an awful lot to really understand and reduce the amount of time that we're spending on those incidents after hours. Right. Well, it's interesting because we talk a lot about unplanned downtime and maintenance for gear, right, and machines, and it's hugely impactful, and there's a lot of conversations about prescriptive maintenance and, and kind of getting ahead of that. We don't hear that conversation so much about people. Yeah, about the humans. About the humans involved, and I thought it's a really interesting take as we go more to the service economy and the complexity of these systems between the APIs and everything's connected is, is you know, astronomically more complex than it was in the past. It definitely is. Like We used to have very simple traditional services, but now it's hundreds of different services and applications that all need to talk together. So managing that's a very different game than it used to be. Right. So how does PagerDuty help? How do, you, how do you start to build the AI, the machine learning for it to be able to you know, triage and more importantly, you know, assign the right task to the right people. I think firstly, it started off with uh, us having many disparate systems, bringing that together and funneling through PagerDuty so we knew what we had. Um, it's like having many different nations around the world trying to talk but not a common interface. And bringing that together was the first step for us. Yeah. And what's the next step? We're still pulling it together? Still pulling it together. Um, now actually understanding what we have turning that into uh, uh, processes that are more efficient, uh, using the technology to, to move the uh, various conversation and alerts and information to the right areas, be triaged ahead of time before problems actually happen and impact the customer. I think the other thing that we're moving more towards is starting to use the data a lot more to make more valuable data-driven decisions, uh, as opposed to intuition-based decisions that we used to make. Right. And, and is, did, did the PagerDuty replace something else that you already had, or is it kind of a supplement? And kind no, of a, no, it didn't replace anything we had. So, so if I go back just to the technology one genetic history, we're 30 years old, we started off before the internet. Right. So as we made this, this transition from on-premises to a SaaS-based world, we needed tools to help us in this multi-tenanted, always-on world. No, I thought you were going to say something. So, so what, what, what are the kind of characteristics of the biggest problems that, that come up in terms of application interfaces or, you know, 
when you got all these things tied together, what seems to be the weakest link, or what is the one that you know causes the, the most angst, that now you can kind of reduce the uh, reduce that angst? I don't. I don't think there's any one specific thing. Um, we tend to talk about root cause an awful lot, where it's really root causes. Um, and it's very rarely ever one simple thing that's caused the problem. It's normally a, a multitude of factors that come into play. And some of that can be, has the engineer been called three times overnight and he came to work with two hours sleep? Right. And, and you said you, you said you carried a pager. Hopefully you don't have it on right now. It, it is on right now. Oh, it is yet. on right now. <laughs> Did you raise your hand in the keynote? <laughs> <laughs> to switch the number. <laughs> so I mean, have you seen have you seen a reduction in, in kind of the pressure of being on call and the yeah, kind so of the quality of the stuff that gets through the triage and actually makes it to the pager? Yeah, so we've we've got some stuff that we fix from bed now. We used to have to wake up. Now fix we don't from have bed? to. Yeah. Without um, getting up. So we use a Pager Duty mobile app, and then we have some stuff that we've built into that as well, and we can fix things from bed. It's awesome. And to give you a, a, a specific right, example. We used to have some issues that would take us 30 minutes to resolve. We've managed to bring that down to three minutes. And why? Is that because better better tasking of the people, better identification of the problems? What are some of the things that drive that? Exactly that. Down? So it is bringing the multiple inputs into a central place, that being interpreted, and then being shifted off to the right resources to be able to fix it. Behind all that as well, some automated tasks that kick off and that just condenses the whole end-to-end uh, -end process uh, uh, um, uh, dramatically. So our customers are seeing a much uh, greater mean time between failure because we can get on to things a lot faster. Right, right. And how long have you been a PagerDuty customer? Uh, three years. Three years, okay. Okay, so lessons for uh, for people thinking about PagerDuty, what would you tell them? Some of your peers that are, that are carrying the pager and kind of red-eyed and weary and, <laughs> and exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I think managing your people is, is very important. I think we're, we're living in a world where talent is actually hard to secure. So you need to ensure that that talent is protected and looked after, well nourished and grows. Um, and so we've used PagerDuty to help do that, to ensure that, that um, teams don't burn out, to understand what root causes are so we can attack it right at the cause um, and become more efficient. Right. And is, okay. Is there any specific... Um, Kind of characteristics or attributes within the people, either in their behavior or things that they do, that you're measuring as being now less burnout oh, absolutely. versus more. Yeah. What are some of the things you measure? Absolutely. So within us, we actually run an employee NPS survey um, uh, twice a year. Um, so <laughs> they all just wrote both five so that they get a, <laughs> get a bonus. No, 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 no. <laughs> no that, that's how I get a bonus. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and, and really, some of the fundamentals around the, the number of on-call, out-of-hours work that was occurring. That was real data that we could measure against before and after, um, and we've seen afterwards that is no longer a thing. That is being managed quite, quite um, uh, in, a, in a much more efficient way. Right. Don't share any secrets, but when things were not good, what orders of magnitude of, of work was done kind of unscheduled, which was causing this angst, and how is that kind of a, oh, adjusted? Look, look, we would go, we would have engineers working multiple, multiple people working multiple hours every night. Um, look, I'll be quite frank, we had people resign, uh, we knew that's how far it got down, and we knew right. we to do something. Right, right. All right, good. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing the story, and good luck. Hopefully, nobody else resigns, and uh, they keep a, couple, a bunch of happy, uh, happy clients, with no burnout, and deliver that great customer experience. Absolutely. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. He's Dan, the Race Cameron. I'm Jeff. You're watching The Cube. We're at Pager Duty Summit, downtown San Francisco. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next yeah, time. You, uh...